Hello people and welcome to How the End Came to Be. Now, this is only versions 1.8 and lower. It only fits like that. I can't figure out everything else in 1.9 and everything. So it's basically 1.8 and lower and yeah, let's get started. So firstly, we're going to be focusing on a few subtitles and that will be, um, let's see, The End's Formation, How the End Came to Be. Um, the Ender Dragon, who the Ender Dragon actually is. Um, what's next? The Enderman. Now, the Enderman uh, is actually a very clever thing I thought of. And the Obsidian Towers, the Ender Crystals, the End Dungeon, the King's Defeat, which I'll explain to you later in this episode, and the King's Throne. Now, the only thing that doesn't make sense is why the Ender Dragon gets healed by the End Crystal. Now, that could be for some sort of, um, like, the King likes his jewel jewels. I think it is, like crystals and stuff, and it heals him, makes him feel better for himself, that he owns all this gold and stuff. That's basically what that means, or it's trying to apply to itself. Now, let's start from the beginning. There was basically an island in the sky with a kingdom on it. And as you can see from this picture, there's a happy town with no one. I couldn't actually find a town with people in it, but anyway, besides the point. Um, there's also villages. And there's the king. Now remember the king carefully, because the king is important, a vital part in this um, theory. Okay, so basically a war had happened, and it was a nasty war. After the war, infections came, and people didn't turn into zombies. Sorry about that. That's the only way I could express infections. But basically, the humans actually turned into endermen. Now that explains why there are so many of them. Also... They are really humans in endermen bodies. Now that explains why they are always just wandering around looking away, oh, for a way out. But they also have a power with their endermen bodies. They can teleport. And some teleport just randomly, luckily, into the human world. And they are happy, but still, no, no endermen like being looked at, at by humans because they, they hate how they look. Now that probably gives you a clue who the ender dragon is. Anyway, also... After the war, lots of destruction had happened, and the island was blown to pieces. So that makes sense with the island and everything. And basically, the infection was a special infection, let's just make that up. And the infection actually affected all life, and turned everything into what the end stone is today. <coughs> Moving on, and now we're up to the ender dragon, what you've been waiting for for so long. The ender dragon is really the king, basically. So, he got infected as well, but as he was a king, the infection, I don't know, turned him into some mutant dragon. Now, that's all for the story part. This is connections. So, you know the towers with the end, the crystals? They are really just ordinary towers that have been converted into um, obs obsidian towers. Get that? And also, the end crystal is really satellite on top of houses. Make sense? Um, so that's the only part that is wrong in my theory, is that the end stone actually heals you, the, um, heals the ender dragon, I mean, but the satellite, how can I even heal someone? Now, guys, with the end dungeon in the real world, to go to the end, um, the people who actually made that were actually the people in that kingdom who turned into endermen. So that makes all sense. And they're probably the same people who were mining the world, um, the normal world, to get resources to build the end dungeon. That all makes sense. And they probably had pets of silverfish, most likely. Or maybe the silverfish was their pets, but the pets were infected as well, turning them into silverfish. That makes sense with that um, part of the story. Anyway, so basically, why um, endermen drop ender pearls is because when they were humans, the, their trade currency was ender pearls. And they made a special form of ender pearls as eyes or enders to make the portal work. That's probably the reason for that. I just made up on the spot. <laughs> okay, back to the ender dragon exploding. Now, why would he explode if it's just like a cool feature, you know? But really, if what if it's the defeat the, the or the shock of losing? Or victory for you. So, as you can see this villager losing his king, he's shouting, No king! You know, he's shocked, 
He can't believe his king has just died. His king is supposed to be all noble. And I guess that's what the Ender Dragon exploding is supposed to show. Okay? And yeah, one last thing of this episode is um, the Ender, when the Ender Dragon dies, it drops his portal back to the human world. Now, the king was the only one, I presume, who could actually get back to the human world. That would make sense why the Ender Dragon drops that. But also, the king only stored it in his throne, as you can see here. And that's what this, um, the formation is, with the bedrock and the portal. That is the Ender Dragon's throne. So I hope you enjoyed this. I basically got this IDs from my friends and family and stuff. And I just put it into all one. He wrote on my ideas as well. And I hope you enjoyed this. It was a great pleasure making this. Like if you want to see more. Bye!